Paul in his letter to the Galatians <coughs> said, I see that you observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid I have labored over you in vain. Now here we are this crowded week of observing these different days. And this is the season. And naturally it's the year. What did Paul give to the world? What he gave to the world is this. That the Spirit of God and the human imagination are one. He said we did not receive the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is from God. That we may understand the gifts bestowed upon us by God. Here is the one that became the many, that the many may become the one. For one must be all, and comprehend within itself all things both small and great. Everything in the world, all that I behold, though it appears without, it is within in my imagination, of which this world of mortality is but a shadow. So when we are told, and I, if I be lifted up, I will lift all men and draw all men unto me. Now we are told, he is lifted up. Therefore all men are already redeemed. But they have to experience it within themselves. They are already redeemed. But in this world of mortality, this must be now, I would say, repeated within the individual. For he must contain and experience all within himself. There is only God in this world. God only acts and is in existing beings or men. Now let me share with you a story that was given to me last Friday night. This lady's husband's name is Ray. When I use the word Ray, I am speaking of her husband. She said last year, Ray said to me, it's going to cost a thousand dollars to put on a roof, a new roof. We need the roof, but it'll cost a thousand dollars. He didn't say they did not, uh, could not afford it. He just said, I saw the new roof. Right then and there, I saw the new roof. Then she said, I was working at my sewing machine. It's an old one, but it was adequate. It did the job, but I would like a new one, she said. And so, I imagined a new one. There was the old one, but I imagined the new one. Then I was putting away my tape recorder, and I felt how heavy this thing is. I would like a new, lightweight one. I put the old one away, the heavy one, but I thought I would like a new one that is light of weight. So I put it away the new one that was light of weight. And this past week I got a settlement from the insurance company, <coughs> pardon me, for two thousand and fifty odd dollars. I now have my nice new sewing machine. I have my nice, lightweight tape recording. Ray's shoes do not hurt. <laughs> and there is money for the roof and much, much, much left over. Now on Friday you will hear, if you go to service, 
There are seven words on the cross. Three taken from Luke, three from John, and one from Matthew and Mark. It's the same one from Matthew and Mark, which is the fourth one. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's the one taken from these two Gospels. But the first one used on the cross is from Luke. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Everything is moving under compulsion. No one sees the invisible causation. No one sees the invisible imaginal acts. There is putting pressure upon everyone who is bent in a certain direction to perform the needed act to produce the imaginal act that is completely unseen by the world. Here, every natural act, natural effect, has a spiritual cause and not a natural. A natural cause only seems. It is a delusion of the fading vegetable memory. Now in her letter to me she said these things I remember. In her case she is blessed that she can remember when Ray said to her it's going to cost a thousand dollars to put on the new roof and I saw the new roof even at the moment maybe we thought we could not now afford the new roof. When I use my so in machine, it was adequate, it was good, it did the job, <clears throat> but I would like a new one, and I saw a new one. And when I put away my tape recording, it's all right, it was adequate, but it was heavy when I put it away. I thought I've seen all these nice new lightweight ones, and I would like a nice lightweight one, good one. Now she said, I have all of them. I have my nice new lightweight, my new machine, raised shoes, they do not hurt, and the roof will be a new one. The money is there and much left over. <clears throat> so the first cry on the cross, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They're all asleep, moving under compulsion, and men and women unwittingly, most of them, some wittingly, are setting the whole thing in motion. And they're simply moved. They're all passing through the furnaces. So the first word on the cross, a word on the cross does not mean a single word. It's a completed thought. 